Hello, friends. So Beltane is upon us, and I wanted to take a moment with you to hopefully inspire you to, in your own lives, take a moment and align with this holy time in the seasonal wheel. So here we are at Beltane, at least in the Northern Hemisphere. We're at the midway point, the cross-quarter holy day, between, well, just about, it'll be this weekend, between the spring equinox and summer solstice. So Beltane or Bealtaine is a more traditional um, pronunciation of it. Um, many of us know as May Day, and there's a, a much kind of deeper, more ancient, complex um, kind of set of mysteries that Beltane holds. And the one that I want to bring forward today with you is about the covenant of love between uh, Creator and the created right? However you want to frame that. Um, Beltane is a time of, you know, spring has come from spring equinox. You know, we've had that actual bursting forth of the blossoms. Now we're in this very fertile, you know, th there's um, often a celebration of sexuality at this time and of all that creates life creates love. It's a time of love making and of aligning with love making <laughs> in a much wider context, right? So I wanted to invite you into, you know, I have the seasonal ritual immersion. All the details for that are below. And that, you know, goes much more deeply into Beltane, into, uh, you know, a suggestion for really coming into ritual alignment meeting the sacred need to be adored, to be cherished, aligning with the lovemaking of heaven and earth. You can see all that below. And it's a beautiful way to be supported in your own deeper uh, connection to this time and alignment and, and gathering the healing that's present here at this time. Um, but whether or not you do that, I wanted to invite you into connection to Beltane because, at least from my perspective and the perspective of her mystery school, this is the time where we renew our covenant, the covenant of love, of the love that abides, right? And the, where we also realign with the pure, true nature of lovemaking, right? So just some things to consider, you know, wherever you are in your world, right? First of all, the covenant of love. What is that? I looked up, <laughs> I looked up covenant because I use that word a lot. And so the official definition of it is an agreement with brings, which brings about a relationship of a commitment between God and his people. The Jewish faith, for instance, is based on the biblical covenants made with Abraham, Moses, and David. So from my perspective, particularly around Beltane, the covenant is this simple. If you turn toward me, I will cherish you. There's nothing else to it. You know, the true nature of the love that abides is to be that, to be merciful, to be love, to meet us, to cherish us, to adore us, to, you know, bring us forward into nobility and bring us alive again because that's its nature, not because we're perfect. <laughs> you know, Beltane can be a time if you're, if you're kind of, you know, it's a time of remembering the sacred marriage. It's a time of renewing vows or making vows between couples often, right? For me, often it's a time where I go to the Beltane fire and I return my sexuality to the place where it comes from and ask for it to be purified and realigned with worship only. Right, so we all have, maybe you don't have a relationship with Beltane yet, but I, I would invite you to have one because this is a very, you know, this is, these are long tides. These are natural cycles and there's a lot of rich, strong, clear, pure support and realignment that is apart from the bewilderment and the changing tides of human culture, right? So there's a simplicity there's a way that turning to the seasonal wheel in general will bring a certain rhythm and sanity to your life that itself abides. But when we turn to Beltane, we're turning to this covenant. The covenant being, if you turn to me, i.e. God talking, or goddess, or creation, or the ancient 
truths, if you turn to me, I will meet you. I will find you. I will love you. Importantly, the sacred needs that are touched on at this time are the sacred needs to be cherished and to be adored. Not out of a, not out of a deficit, but out of a sacred need. Because in being cherished or cherishing, in being adored or adoring, you open, we open to something much bigger than ourselves. We open to receive and we open to be blessed. And it changes everything, right? It sanctifies the moment. It sanctifies the body. It reminds us of who we really are, right? This is not a cotton candy kind of, you know, romantic time at all. This is based in ancient, holy, rhythmic, um, archetypal, beautiful ritual power, right? And natural power. So Beltane, when you turn to that covenant, I mean, what I would invite, like I said, the ritual immersion, I love it because it's already everything that I would offer to you. It really fleshed out, you know, and held in a much deeper way. But basically you just know that even in your simple prayer, you are turning to the love that abides with an awareness that you have a sacred need to be cherished, to be adored. Sacred need meaning it relates to the evolution and the expression of your soul, and it will not rest until it's met. Now, a lot of us end up displacing these sacred needs all sorts of places. We displace them on our relationships and then get really disappointed and upset when they can't be met there, right? We displace them in addictions. We displace them in all sorts of, it's just the way that it goes, right? So during this time, we bring these sacred needs back into contact with the one, the reality, the truth, the love in life and in creation that will meet them and that has the capacity to meet them no matter what. You know, we're imperfect. Here around Beltane, a lot of a lot of things can move around our intimate relating and our sexuality and how we've the choices we've made around sexuality and how we're feeling about that, <laughs> where our fulfillment is, where our yearnings are, and all these things, where our imperfections are, you know, choices that we've made or not made that we regret. There Beltane is a time of purification. You jump over the Beltane fire to be purified for the year ahead. And there's mercy in that, that there is a moment on the wheel where we, where it's acknowledged that intimacy, sexuality, your, these things in your life are tied to natural law. They're tied to the well-being of all of creation. This isn't just you. It could still be just you and be important, but this is something that reunites you your fulfillment, your sexuality, your yearnings for intimacy, for union, for love making, with much bigger movements, which brings a certain wisdom into your own life. It brings a deeper love, a deeper understanding, and a much deeper resource. Right? So turning to this, this covenant, remember that covenant means this is a promise and not a promise made between two people. This is a promise made in sacred law, right? If you turn to me, if you remember me, I will be right here. I will meet you. I will adore you. I will cherish you, right? So we are turning towards that with that love that abides. And really importantly, it doesn't matter who you are, how anybody feels about you, how your relationships are going, you know, what mistakes you've made. This is a time of purification and it will be done for you. Right? When we align with natural law, and we align with these bigger movements in creation, part of why we do that is so that we're served, so that in all the ways we're blessed and we're served and we are we're receiving, we are accepting the grace. We're accepting the support of much bigger forces than ourselves. 
Because a lot of times, especially around sexuality, especially around intimacy, especially around love, we're up against a lot. <laughs> we're up against a lot and we do our best and we need, we, we need to be entrained to something that is much more congruent, much more reverent, much more true than a lot of what human culture is presenting at this moment that is generally confusing and conflicting and incongruent. So that's one, one thing I would invite you into is, is consider this covenant. Suspend for a moment whether or not it actually exists. Just consider that it exists. Find in yourself what, what, what would be the prayer in relationship to that covenant. You know, my love, I have regrets. I'm lonely. I need you. You know, it can be as simple as that. My love, I'm, I'm with this beautiful, you've brought this beautiful being into my life to share these holy mysteries with. I'm asking you to fill me. So that's what I bring to this lover in my life, this love in my life. Fill me, teach me. And that brings me to the second, the second thing that I would I mean, there are many things that Beltane offers, but the second piece that I would invite you to turn towards is to, for me, Beltane, and specifically, you know, the practice we work with in Beltane, in the ritual immersion, is the lovemaking of heaven and earth, right? And rejoining what is essentially an infinite and eternal lovemaking between heaven and earth that creates all things, right? We are doing, we're just falling into line, aligning into, within that, being nourished by it, and importantly, being educated by it. You know, one of the most pure places to get educated about sexuality and intimacy and how you open and what you need is to go straight to the way that the sky, the above, meets the below, to watch and to be moved and touched by that and to know that that deeply that you are that you are creation you are the earth herself right you this you are the earth herself receiving your lover receiving love is a, is about receiving the above right and how you open to that all the ways that you can open to that all the ways that you can you can express your pleasure your gratitude your abundance are are here they're in creation they're in nature just to make it a little more clear is that if you go and you sit and you watch and you really feel the way that the dew collects on the leaves in the morning and you feel the delicacy of that and you feel that the quality of that ask yourself does some part of you yearn for that in lovemaking, in intimacy, that kind of touch? And inside it, meeting, being met by that kind of touch, what, in what way would you open? What would that kind of, what would that level of cherishing bring to the surface of you? What would that remind, how would that help you remember who you really are? Right? Or you watch just a thunderous, you know, the, you watch the thunder rolling across the sky. You listen to it. You feel it. You feel the power. And you feel the way in which you want to give yourself up to that. You want to yield to that. Not because it has this power over you. There's nothing complicated there just because that's what it is. It's pure power and you want to feel it rolling over your body. And you want to feel it rolling over the landscape and the terrain of you. Right, so there's, there's a way that why I invite this, especially in the school, especially in my tradition, why I invite this as a really important um, time of ritual renewal and renewal of the covenant is because in so many ways, this holy day and nature herself and all, everything about it is preserving for us the pure nature, the pure erotic nature of our sexuality, 
right? And of what we yearn for in intimacy. So we can, you know, we can just let all the rest go for a minute. You know, and that's what I think is, you know, turning to ritual time here is to really step out of all that we are, all that we're thinking, all that we've figured out so far, the relationships we're in or not in, everything, come to sacred space in direct connection with the one who made you, in direct connection with the love that abides, and be in ritual communication. This is, this is a moment of remembering who you really are, outside of all that moves and outside of all that you've been convinced you might be and outside of all the confusion and bewilderment of our times and of your own life, right? Your own being. And then you bring that back. So notably, I mean, many of us have various levels and various iterations of confusion or pain or yearning we don't understand or yearning that has never been met around sexuality and around intimacy and when you bring that fully back home you bring it out of the relational and bring it fully back home and then bring it into the relational but into relationship with the love that abides the eternal love making of heaven and earth then all of a sudden you're resourced right we stay connected to the seasonal wheel and to these deeper movements in creation because they resource us. This isn't, they don't diminish our very specific, very human lives. There's a resource there, right? So if you're not in partnership and you're lonely and you're yearning for it, if you are and you're still lonely, <laughs> you're still yearning for something, if you are in partnership and you're really fulfilled or you're in partnership and you have real sincere intentions for that partnership bring whatever that is home here right to your own deeper knowing and your own deeper resource let yourself be purified right let yourself be cherished and be adored by the one who is made to do that right and then bring that back and see how that changes your life you know, a lot of what we work with in her mystery school, I mean, we do a lot of things in the school, but when we approach ritual, we really do, it's not, it's, we, we approach it as personal ritual. You know, there are many, there are going to be many, depending on who you are and what you're connected to. They'll, they'll be Beltane community rituals, right? And they're beautiful and they are what they, that's a whole other thing, right? This is about personal ritual and this is about your very private, intimate connection with your own sexuality, whatever's happening with that. This is about your very private, intimate connection with the love that abides and your relationship to your forgetting or your remembering, your amnesia or your remembrance of this covenant. If you turn toward me, I will find you. That's all you have to do. Just turn toward me. This isn't one of those covenants that has a bunch of rules attached and you have to be worthy enough to meet. This is a covenant that is a covenant with the true nature of love and the true nature of mercy and grace and the true nature of that which is lovemaking in all of its forms. Explicit sexuality being one of many. Right? There are so many ways that we make love, that we create love, we create life, and how we learn how to do that, and how we refine how we do that, is through connection to the sacred marriage, and to the way that all of creation makes love and makes life. We unify our own singular human lives with the broader beautiful interconnectedness of all life where sacred law and natural law are clear and strong and pure full of healing full of clarity full of purity and full of by the way and full of a kind of natural eroticism that 
eternally creates itself and never gets old the way that a lot of kind of more conditioned eroticism does right we're looking towards unnatural the milk the honey the seed the reed stalks right the apple tree and what happens at the at the foot of the apple tree right this is about natural eroticism right so that's Beltane. I just wanted to take a moment with you to honor this turn of the wheel. You can see all the information about the seasonal ritual immersion series, and there's specifically Beltane in there. It's discounted. Um, and, you know, lunar Beltane, I think the new moon is April 30th, so that would be lunar Beltane. And then solar Beltane is the actual May 1st, right? So. I won't get into all of that, but just know that you're in the window of Beltane now, and this is in the atmosphere, and this is present for you to turn to in any way you want, as simply as you want, or in as big of a way as you want, with your partner, with your community, alone, whatever you want, but it's here, and it's here for you. Blessed be.